voice so high. You never do that. It's because there's a butterfly. <laughs> yes, well, it's our feature insect of the day, <laughs> as, uh, as you will. And uh, he's kind of a cool little butterfly guy, wouldn't you say? Um, guy, I'm assuming it's a guy. Look at, kind of a cute little fella. But uh, okay, <laughs> yes, let's get on with Mab, my friends. All right, let's make this guy a little smaller. Okay, he's kind of cool. <laughs> he's kind of funny looking. Hey, I don't know why. I'm just, I'm all giddy right now. I don't know. I'm just kind of laughing away here. All right, let's take a look at our chapter three review test. I don't know what that means, review for the test. Or a little forward slash there. Anyway, it is the first video in a series of three videos. As always, if you recall, we do this all the time. All right, let's take a look at the problem. Let me bring this thing on down. Okay, what is this asking me to do here? It does say, it says that Chaz kept a record of how many gallons of gas he purchased each day last week. Okay. And then basically, there's our table, okay, order the days from least amount of gas Chaz purchased to greatest amount of gas Chaz purchased. All right, from least to greatest. And I have my days of the week over here, so let's take a look. Okay, so I'm going to analyze these decimals. First of all, I know that the highest place value is the place value farthest to the left. And the least... Uh, valuable place value. If we say the least uh, place value is farthest to the right. This is important to know because when I look at these, I see four, I see three. These are both in the ones place. This four is in the ones place. This three is in the ones place and ones place. So I don't have anything like in the tens place. So obviously I'm going from the least. I can't choose the four. That's too large. That's larger than three. So I'm going to just look at the two, three. When I move over one, I realize the tenths place is the next largest um, next to the ones. And here I have seven. Now, because I'm looking for the least, I want the least number in that place value. That would be the least number. So 3.75, therefore, would be the least number I have. And 3.75 happens to be Thursday. So I'm going to go ahead and bring Thursday over. Here we go, Thursday, you win the first lot. All right, and then if we look at the next one, what we just talked about was 3.9. That was Tuesday, so Tuesday needs to come over. Come on, Tuesday. All right, now now I'm looking at my fours. Now with my fours, I have 4.5, 4 4.2, two 4.2s. Interesting. Okay, now five again, that's larger in that place value than the two is right here and right here. So I'm just for the time being, I already know that he's got to end up into the last column. So I'll be moving Monday over here. Now I can concentrate on these two. And what we see here is 4.2, 4.2, 4.25, 4.25. Now we have a six and now we have the eight. And the eight then is larger than the six. So the six is least. So that means Friday would go here and then Wednesday, the other day, would go there. There we go. Hey, there's their home. So Thursday, Tuesday, Friday, Wednesday, Monday. And again, we just followed that simple method of looking at the place value, knowing we need to know which was the largest. Okay, so what else? Now this is for numbers 2A through 2C. There they are. It says select true or false for each statement. So it says 16 and 437 rounded to the nearest whole number is 16. Well, let's look at this number. Let me write this down. I just want to, it's a really bright green. So 16 and 437 uh, thousandths to the nearest whole number. Well, the whole number is the ones place. That's this one right here. And I know that when I want to round to the nearest whole number, I need to Take a look at the digit to its right. It's like I almost like want to underline that and then quickly draw my little arrow to look at the digit to the right. And it's four or less. And the rule is if it's four or less, you let it rest. That's my what I say. So four or less, let it rest means that the six is not going to change. The six is going to stay the same. And then all the other digits just automatically to the right 
turn to zero, including the one that we were looking at. Right? We don't need to write 16.000. The number is just 16. And again, it says it's rounded to the nearest whole number is 16. Yes, I would say that's true. All right, let's look at the next one. The next one says 16 and 437,000 rounded to the nearest tenth is 16.4. Well, again, I'm going to write this down. Rounded to the nearest tenth, I'm going to underline the tenths place. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draw that arrow to that digit to the right. And the 3 is going to decide what happens to the 4. And the 3 is 4 or less, so we're going to let the 4 rest. So he's going to stay a 4. The 16 stays there. Of course, the other two digits turn to 0. And of course, that's just an equivalent decimal. 16.4 is the same as 16.400. Therefore, yes, this one, and again, is true. We're 2 for 2 here. All right, let's look at the next one. Next one says 16. Uh, 437,000 rounded to the nearest hundredth is 16.43. Well, let's look at that again. So if we're looking at that same number, and we're going to round to the nearest hundredth, here's the hundredths place. Okay, again, we're looking to the right. So the 7 is going to decide what happens to the 3. The 7, though, is 5 or more. The other part was 4 or less. Now we have 5 or more means you have to up the score. means he's telling the 3 you're going to have to up the score by 1 to go to 4. Therefore, our number would be 16.44. Of course, the 7 turns to 0. And you know what? That is not what this says here, so I'm going to say false. No, that's not true, all right, based on what I just stated, all right? Cool, let's keep going. Students are selling muffins at a school bake sale. It says one muffin costs 25 cents. Two muffins cost 37 cents. Muffins, I'm sorry, three muffins cost 49 cents. Okay, and four muffins cost 61 cents. Okay, we have a lot of different prices for a different uh, amount of muffins here. If this pattern continues, we love patterns, how much will seven muffins cost? Explain how you found your answer. Okay, and there's a little box, I guess, where we can do our work. Okay, so looking at this, I mean, the first thing I probably would think about doing is I, I don't know, maybe do a table. And I'll do one here just really quick. Maybe that way I can see all the numbers together. It's kind of sloppy, but we'll make it work. And so here we, it's basically the, the number of muffins, maybe. Let's see if I can fit this in here. Okay, and over here we have the, the, the cost or number of muffins and the cost. Give me a way, a chance to look at these. So if I have my just one muffins, 25 cents, okay. Two is going to be 37 that we can glean from that right there. It's an increase. If I were to just, first thing I'd want to do is sub, sub, subtract these two to see what the difference is between the two. It happens to be 12 cents. I'm wondering if that continues on that it just 12 cents is being added. And sure enough, for the third one would be 49 cents if you add another 12 cents. So does that continue? 11, 5, 61 cents. So four muffins is 61 cents. So it is increasing by 12 cents each time. Now we could continue to go five, six, seven is one way. Or sitting on four, since I know I'm gonna have to add a certain amount of money, I could just say, well, five, six, seven is three more. So what's 12 cents times three? And that's 36. I could add the 36 onto the 61. That would be one way. And I end up with 97 cents is what I would say that that would be. And um, is there another way you probably could have solved that? I suppose there could be. Um, I did see the pattern right away, you know, and the pattern was that it was increasing by 12 cents. And I determined that amount. So each additional muffin then would have to be 12 cents more. I, I noticed that as I started to make my table. So the cost of 12, uh, I'm sorry, the, the cost of seven muffins um, is just like saying, well, that's 61 cents plus 12 cents plus 12 cents plus 12 cents. I mean, that's the other addition that you could have done rather than multiplying the way that I did. Okay, so let me go ahead and get that explanation because it does say explain how you found your answer. I'm just going to move this guy, ooh, move him up here for the time being. See if I can keep him on all white. Looks like that maybe right here. Ooh, there you go. Fit right in there. That way I can type up what I need to put here. First question is if this pattern continues, how much will they cost? That would be 97 cents. What do we have here? It says here, it says what is the value of the underlying digit? 
and this is mark all that apply. Well, the value of the 6 in that place value, the tenths, would have a value of 6 tenths, which this one here. Definitely be this one because this one is 6 tenths. That's the value of that digit. Here is 6 hundredths. That would not be. Here 6 tenths is exactly in word form that we just stated. 6 hundredths, no. That goes with this one here. 6 times 1 tenth is 6 over 10. That is 6 tenths. So that would also be one. So you have three of those. All right. And that seems easy enough. It says Rwanda jogged 2.14 uh, kilometers farther than Terence. Select the values that could represent how far each student jogged. Mark all that apply. Well, if Rwanda, let's just try to get some information out here first before I start looking at the 2.14 kilometers suggests that definitely Rwanda went fat went went farther than Terence did by that much farther. It doesn't state how much Rwanda, so maybe we'll see. It says that Rwanda, if she had run or if she had jogged 6.5 kilometers, Terence did 4.36. Well, this number is larger than that, so that's a possibility. What we could do is take Terence's uh, number and we mul uh, not multiply, we add that to the 2.14. Here we get 10, that's 4, that would be 5 decimal place 6.50 so yes that's definitely a possibility because it works in our equation in our uh, because what we're saying here if we were to write this out as 2.14 plus the distance that Terence is equal to 6.5 so all all of these are kilometers and that's true because here this is Terence here is Rwanda and this shows the amount how much farther. So that would be true. Here we have 4.8 and then Terence 2.6. I guess that's still a possibility. Let's take 2.76, 2.14. We have 4.90. Not quite. Close, but not quite. Here, this one here, we don't have to do any math because we can look at the reasonableness by looking at it. Terence did not jog farther than Rwanda, so this can't be. We are all talking about the same unit, yes. So can't be that one. Here, good possibility. Let me see if we just added two. Yeah, it looks pretty close. Let me just do some quick math here. Two, oops, this two's not supposed to go there. Two's supposed to go there. We have four, two, uh, 7.24. Yeah, that's definitely so. There's just these two answers here. Now we come down, shade the model to show the decimal, okay, 542 thousandths. Okay, and they have two models here. Okay, this model here, again, with place value blocks, when you were in second grade, a place value block like this one here had the value of 100, and you learned that each one of these cubes here was equal to one. But now that you're in the upper grades, woohoo, no more, you know, of the lower grade stuff. We kind of think of this as hundredth rather than hundred. And so if this was a hundredth, okay, then um, this here, these would be called tenths, right? And, but we don't need tenths here because we can show that on here. This is one tenth, two tenths. So maybe this is trying to show the thousands place here, okay? That, that would make sense. Okay, so let me see if I think I have some, some stuff stashed away. The first thing I want to do is think of it, and this is like saying, okay, this is one whole then, because there's a hundred, right? hundred cents in one dollar. So we can think of this as like one penny, so this would be like a dime. And that's what the tenths place is. Well, we have 50 of those, so we'd want to put one there. Let me do another one. So that makes one tenth. Here's two tenths. Okay, because now that makes four tenths, right? And we'll take one more. And there's five tenths. Does that make sense? So for the best part. Anyway, do my best to get them all to squeeze in there. There's five of them. But now we have four in the hundredths place. Well, that would suggest, like we just talked about, these were all one hundredth. So we could show four of those. We'd need like a little cube which uh, presently I don't have. So let me see if I can get one. So here's one cube here. And since we have four hundredths, I would need four of those. And we'll just kind of put them here one by one here. 
There's one, two, three, four. So I've shown five tenths, as you can see, four hundredths. Now I need two thousandths. Now here's the problem. I don't have thousandths. We know that there's ten thousandths in every hundred. So I think what we could do is use this to kind of show that one little square there is going to be broken up into 10 equal pieces. So let me draw a line to that. So what this will show is this right here. That one square there is this guy. Does that make sense? This one square is this guy. We're going to break them up into 10 equal pieces so we can show 10 thousandths in one hundredth. And that's what this little guy's here. So we need two of him. So we just take one of those, make one more, and then we can move him right there. Does that make sense? Five hundred forty two thousands. And that's what this whole number is here. Okie dokie. Yeah. Go math. Go math. Go math. Yeah. Don't have really a good uh, song for that. So, Mr. Warrior, you should probably not make us suffer. Please. <laughs> what am I doing? I don't know what it is. Benjamin rode his bicycle 3.6 miles on Saturday and 4.85 miles on Sunday. Okay, wow, he did better the second day. How many miles did he ride Saturday and Sunday combined? Who combined? That should give you a big clue. Add him. Use the digits on the tiles. On the, oh, I'm sorry. Use the digits on the tiles to solve the problem. Okay, digits may be used more than once or not at all. As they always say that. Well, it's just... Seems pretty simple here. We've got the decimal. We've talked about the decimal. That separates whole from fraction or decimal. In this case, decimal. They even say decimal fraction. So the whole part is on that side of decimal. So that's going to be 3.6. Okay, here we have 4.85. Yeah, I guess they... <laughs> I mean, these are all the nine, these are all the ten digits. I love this question. I usually ask my students, and that is, how many digits are there in math? And I love how everyone says, "There's infinity," <laughs> or how about, "There isn't a number. There are only ten digits in math. That's it." And here are your ten. And so they've given us all the digits, which is that's why I think this is kind of comical that they've given all of them to us. It'd be one thing to say, "Okay, don't use a six. Here we go. Now we're just adding here. There isn't a digit there, but you know that you can put a digit there, right? That's an equivalent decimal. That doesn't change the value of that number, if that makes you feel better. But we bring our 5 down here. We have 14. Now you carry the 1. We get 7 plus 1, and that's 8. And we end up getting 8 and 45 hundredths. Right? Yeah, be careful. The decimal changes that. It's not 845. Oh, my goodness. It's Alfin. Alfin. That's right, guys. Another math video. Poof. Here and gone. So, my friends, do yourself a favor. Live long and prosper.